What do you pay a necromancer in? Cryptocurrency. What's going on YouTube? But today I'm going to be giving you guys a necrom guide with a bit of a twist because it's going to be going over a lot of different facets for necrom, including some that don't directly impact it, such as Hey, you just probably made a brand new character. Here's how you might want to level them up doing a couple different things uh, based on the level that you have them at. So we're going to be talking about what sets sell from Necrom, how you can most profit from Necrom, whether or not you are even buying the DLC slash chapter update or not, how you can profit off of it because it is going to be a great time to make a lot of gold uh, because there's going to be a lot of people making new characters, a lot of new people coming to the game, a lot of returning players. So it is overall just a great time to kind of line those pockets up but we will also be having a white streaks mayhem event coming up kind of probably right due through the necrom release for console uh which is already out on pc so it'll just kind of be in the earlier stages of that uh where the necrom update so we're we'll talking about all those little facets and more in this video before we jump into the all the little intricacies if this is just a quick reminder that me and my co-host who's sleeping right here uh if you would not mind to subscribe i can I can't offer you much besides the videos like what you're watching now, but what I can tell you is is that I have read every single comment that you guys have left, so I don't know how many other content creators can do that, so hopefully that earns a subscription from somebody. Starting us off, I want to talk about new player XP methods. So the reason why this is such a good XP method, as you can see, it's already getting started here as we're mid-recording. Uh, we are in the Alakir Desert farming dolems. Now, why specifically the Alakir Desert? The Alakir Desert not only has dolems that are very close to way shrines, it also has easy access to a specific loop. What does that mean? It means that the dolems spawn in a very consistent circle, so you can go around on a brand new character and kill these bad boys and not only get experience for killing the actual Daedric incursions, but you also get a completion point at the end, which will give you a bonus XP. This does not require you to have a high level. As you can see, somebody typed looking for Dolem group, which is LFDG. You type this in zone chat. You can also usually get into groups of people who are also farming this, which can be a really good XP method for early players, especially into, in my opinion, you get to level 10, because that's when a lot of things begin to open up for you. Now, is this the best XP method? Statistically, no, but... This is also assuming that you are a newer player and you want to get easy XP without having to really struggle or waste consumables or anything like that. You can do this straight coming out of, you know, Molog Ball's tutorial area and you'll be good to go. And it'll also give you easy access to jewelry, which is also nice. As you'll see that you're going to get a lot of chests here. I would highly suggest that you guys break down this jewelry on a max level crafter if you have it. If not, this is a great time for you guys to invest into leveling up your crafting experience because you're going to get a lot of rare plates coming from these dolems. The best XP in the game, however, is going to come from Black Rose Prison. However, you probably will have to do it with a friend and likely you're going to want to make sure you don't use your companions for this because you're going to refarm the second round over and over and over again. There's going to be a shield guy that spawns at the end. You're going to let him kill you. But if you farm that over and over and over again with you and a partner, you will hit level 50 as fast as anyone else doing any other method with a whole lot of lead time. You'll be able to be the fastest level 50 Arcanist on console. Fortunately, it's already out on PC, so you won't be the fastest there. But this is probably hands down the fastest XP method. You can see this hi method highlighted more in my XP guide, but it does require a friend. And sometimes those are hard to find. Next up, we're going to talk about how to make some easy gold. Now, this is obviously my bread and butter. I do monthly videos on how to make gold. So this is just more of a rehashing of that information. So we're just going to get yourselves in the right mindset. You're going to be in a seller's mindset. It's super easy. All you have to think to yourself is this couple questions. What type of players are playing ESO right now? New, returning, end game players, yada, yada. And what activities will they be doing now, it's super easy, most of them will be farming a new character. XP potions, training gear, that's the obvious answer to that. Perfect row is going to be very important because perfect row is utilized in those potions. So that's obviously going to be a really good thing to do. 
consumables are going to be very helpful as well. We have White Strike slash Mid-Year Mayhem coming up also in this month. So PvP sets, PvP consumables, uh, basically everything PvP related is also going to be selling. Also, I think two people are going to be making new characters. They're going to be experimenting with them in PvP. So think upgrade mats. Uh, so that's your gold materials. That's your raw materials. Those are going to be shooting up in value also. But two, there's going to be brand new gear sets. Every time a new gear set is released, it usually sells pretty well. It could be absolute hog piss, but there are so many completionists in ESO that if you sell specific items, you're going to make money, especially if you have weapons and whatnot, because those are usually harder to farm and they don't drop as often um, from, you know, zones versus like hands, belts, you know, all those other pieces that you can drop find in delves don't usually have as much value. So if you're selling weapons, even if it's an absolutely garbage set, which the newer sets don't seem like they're going to set the world ablaze, uh, but they will all sell. And that's important to consider. You could list them up and you're going to make at least some money. Along those lines, you're going to be accessing multiple new characters. Don't forget you guys can do crafting writs. Crafting writs are some of the easiest experience in the game. And remember, too, that there will be new daily quests inside of Necrom. I always highly encourage you guys to do daily quests for the newer zones. That includes going back to more recent ones like Galen. If you want gold right now, Galen has some really good daily quests that you can easily complete for some good money. So let's talk about daily quests because most people are thinking, well, I'll just go farm the newest zone here, Jake. That makes the most sense to me. But remember, too, this is not just a Necrom release. We also have a pvp event and think about things like this vardenfell has some amazing sets for pvp so does western skyrim so does the reach so does rothgar uh, so does blackwood and so on and so on and Merkmire. are there any zones that you necessarily suggest i avoid i don't think it's necessarily worth doing southern elsewhere and i don't necessarily think it's worth doing somerset just comparatively, unfortunately. And I also think that High Isle is... Unfortunately as well. But remember, you're not just rolling for sets. You're also rolling for furnishing plans. And High Isle does have some decent ones of those. And you're also rolling for motive pages. Uh, so it is certainly worth doing one such as the Gold Coast for that. But there's no guarantee that you're going to get a good set from there which is really my focus when it comes to time versus return on time equaling gold you're not really getting guaranteed set items whereas at least you know that if you do Vardenfell, yeah you might not get some super valuable bp or anything but you're still going to get some pretty good sets that you're going to be able to sell consistently as rewards Another quick tip to remind you guys as a returning slash new slash getting back into ESO or just kind of an active ESO player. A lot of times when I talk to returning players, new players, they assume that they don't have anything that's worth a lot of gold. The items in your craft bag are worth a shit ton of gold. Your heartwood, your mundane ruins, your grains, your plates, even some of the consumables that you pick up, such as your Dragon Reum, your Dragon Blood, your Clam Gal, your Columbine, never sleep on the value of these items. Never assume that they're worth nothing. Use my links in the description below and you guys can see exactly how much certain items in your craft bag are worth. But everything here has a purpose. Furnishings, uh, materials, for example, are used by the end game community to make really beautiful furnishing pieces. As you can see, if you watched our live stream where we looked at some player houses, they probably used tens of thousands of these and they have to invest tons of gold to do so. Um, but also, this is kind of a shout out too to some of the materials to utilize different styles. A lot of that also goes into making specific furnishing. So always never assume that you don't have things that are worth gold especially in your craft bag because crafting can be a real end game component of the Elder Scrolls Online. Because I know there's a lot of you people who love the ESO story, this is just a quick how do you know where to go in the story. Now, a quick recap for you because this might confuse a lot of people as to why there's multiple one through sixes, and that's because each of the Alliance storylines are technically wholly individualistic. You technically don't even have to play through any of the other ones, and because when ESO was first released, a Daggerfall Covenant character couldn't even go to the Ebonheart Pact 
So their storylines are totally separate before coming together in Cold Harbor, uh, which you can see in the bottom left. Now, obviously now, with Tamriel 1, you can go anywhere, play with anyone, do whatever you want. But this is a storyline recap. You can see where the DLC zones come in. Now, above 14, which is Somerset, you're going to see High Isle, and then you will see Galen. Those are the two most recent DLCs, with Galen being the second most recent behind Necrom, and third would be High Isle, so you can add those mentally in your mind because they're technically not on this photo. Now, ESO is also going to be adding two new companions. Why is that important? It's important for a couple reasons. People who only have access to Necrom or a new player or returning slash endgame players are going to have two new companions to decorate, which means that if you have companion gear, it is going to be exceptionally valuable to sell we talked about this during the market watch it is going to be exceptionally valuable for you guys to sell your companion gear on the market because people are going to be decorating these bad boys uh, out the wazoo uh, companions i think were a great addition to eso online and i'm glad that they kind of added them because i love isabel even though i haven't uh, fully leveled her up yet don't judge me and overall it's going to be a great time to make profit on companion gear and it's also a great way to get a new companion. Say you don't have High Isle or Blackwood. Well, now, if you just have the Necrom release, you can now get two companions. But, dear friends, that's going to wrap up this video. There's a couple extra tips and things that I'm just going to throw at you very quickly, which is just do not forget to join guilds on your new characters. Don't wait to join the Fighters Guild. Don't wait to join the Mages Guild. Don't wait to join those guilds because... You're going to be able to utilize them. You might think to yourself, well, Jake, I don't want to join the Sigic Order. But by joining the Sigic Order, you see Sigic portals in the overworld. And then you can loot those Sigic portals in the newer zones, which have good sets that sell for money. But that is just my kind of final tips for you guys without whacking you over the head with too much information. I will say that every single item I've touched upon in this video has been expanded upon in other videos and... Tomorrow will be a Mid-Year Mayhem Supercut video that has every piece of information you guys could possibly need for that. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. But everything here from experience to which zones to start with to what to sell, what to buy is expanded upon in another video. This is more surface level so that way you guys can think, oh, well, maybe I want to learn more about experience on a new character or, you know, I want to know more about the ESO story leading into it. You know, there's videos for all of that without getting too much in the weeds in this video here. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, this was meant to be my little intro guide to Necrom. And uh, I want to thank you guys again for watching. My final thank you is me giving back, obviously, as I do every single month at the first of the month with three giveaway drawings, one random comment, one random subscriber, and then my favorite comment of the month all get picked and chosen at the first of the month at midnight and each one gets a $20 either gift card or they get a piece of ESO merchandise. So it's always fun to pull three people. I hope you guys don't mind entering because we're on the road to 15,000 subscribers. Every comment, every like, and everything helps. So thank you guys again and I'll catch you guys later. Bye guys. Like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. This one I thought, I was like, oh yeah, I could stream today. I've cut so much of this video and had to reshoot it. Because even right, you might be able to hear it right now. My voice is killing me. The air quality in the state that I live in is just absolutely terrible. And I have an air purifier just running nonstop trying to purify this bad boy. But I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's me recovering from being sick or the stupid air quality, but I'm just dying. I'm so stupid because we got 24 hours in Stros Makai to complete here, people.